Life isn't perfect, and neither are we. Nope. But we know how to face our fears. And have some fun. And talk about all the messiest things of life. Like the messiest things. <laughs> get connected to yourself, get connected to others, and get connected to the life right in front of you. This is The Connected Life with Justin and Abby. That's me. That's you. And you. And welcome to Glacier National Park with Justin and Abby. Woo! Tell about Glacier National Park right now. I mean, we're literally in Glacier National Park. Not we are. Yet. We're on a fun outing, an adventure in the car. Uh, Glacier National Park is one of the most beautiful places. It is awesome. Uh, also, that mountain in front of us is stunning. It's a, like a million feet high. Snow-capped mountain, but it's summer. There's something so amazing about being in snow and heat at the same time. We just we drove to the top of the going the going to the sun road, which is such um, a cool name. Going I love to the it. Sun road. It's like you think you're going to reach the sun. It's like a fortune cookie. And then you get up there, and it's just snow. Yep. It's not sun. Well, it's sun and snow. And then it's a little kid waiting to be hit by a snowball. Mm. Which I did. I threw a snowball at a kid. But that's because he was like 10 years old and he was making his own snowball and trying to throw it at his older brother. Yeah. To which I made a snowball and threw it at him. Yeah. But I didn't peg him or anything. No. It landed by him and he thought it was hysterical. <laughs> and I just gave him this devilish gl- grin. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, <laughs> the only mischief I got in is that I drove you purposely through a waterfall. You did. You drove me right through a waterfall. Yeah, because they have waterfalls it's that called are... called the Weeping Wall. The Weeping Wall. And we were we went by the Weeping Wall. I basically said the Weeping Wall is what I look like one week out of the month. Mm-hmm. Tears everywhere. Tears. So for those of you who don't know, we're going to have a little... But wait, ad- I drove you into it. It was coming off the wall on your side. Yeah. And I dipped in and your window was, it was wide open. It was a jerk open. move and I loved it. You loved it. it you loved it a little bit. Hey, listen, we're still flirting. That's yeah. what you do when you're flirting. Uh huh. But sometimes couples forget about that after they've been together. Yeah, for a they while. stop being playful, like shoving each other's heads in water and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Husbands don't do that in the name of the connected life no. or boyfriends. We're going to talk about vacations today. Ooh. Staying connected through vacations. Dun, vacations, dun, dun, dun. for a lot of people historically, are challenging mm. or wildly memorable. Or wildly, challengingly memorable. Yes. <laughs> a little bit of everything. Someone has some, I don't know, family vacation where Uncle Uncle Tippy Stumpy. goes nuts <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and gets way too drunk and then s- sets fire to the house. And they're oh, like, oh, gosh. Uncle Tippy ruins everything. <laughs> um, or, you know, brothers, sisters are really crazy and intense and out of control and then parents are maybe get really grumpy or it's just the only time you ever had fun was a family vacation. Yeah, that was one of my friends had that. Like, what? That was their fun time? Yeah, like their parents made vacations magical. But um So 360 days out of the year, it was terrible and those 4 days were just magic. Yeah, well his parents worked a lot and could be super focused on that but on vacation they were fully present oh that's really cool so vacations became like the highlight of the year for them the griswold family vacation comes to mind Uh i think about the terrible vacations that some people have going back to that okay and i'm always curious like you know when people try to avoid you, you talked earlier about just engaging it as it is and the messiness of it makes it memorable but so many people want to escape the craziness oh yeah and we, we recently talked with our friend Lauren mm-hmm. about... About how the craziness is where the adventure's at. Where the adventure's at, where it's all fun. And a lot of people begin to get a lot of anxiety and they get terrified of being out of control and they're so trapped with their plan that they miss out on the vacation and they lose connection, which is the point of a family vacation yeah. anyways. Connection. It's so interesting because on this drive we were talking about a friend of yours who's you drove up with sometimes and their parent would get so angry the whole drive up to the top of glacier oh yeah so angry that dude's dad would flip out the entire time because because people were driving too slow (laughs) and this guy would be like why don't they drive faster And Uh, and it was a back and forth and then they're yeah, the whole their, time he's pissed. Their parents would start bickering, and I'm like, 
How did I get stuck in this car with these people? But he, <laughs> but the funny thing is, we went up, and you really can't control how fast you go because there's just cars that are driving whatever speed they want to drive. You can't. And so many times people miss out enjoying the ride. Like, I always think, like, well, if there's cars in front of me, that means I have to go slower. It gives me more time to look at nature. Yeah, I have a reason to look around and take in the scenery. And take in this beauty. Like, what are we racing to the top for? I agree. Well, with us on this vacation that we've been on, we had an interesting, we've had a journey of, like, trying to stay connected and even connect to my parents because we're up here in Montana. Uh We thought we'd share uh, staying connected on this vacation. Okay. And a connection point between me and my dad. All right, let's do it. I don't know. We're just kind of we're kind of swinging for the fences here, seeing where this goes. Yep. So, if you've been listening to the Connected Life for very long, um, you have heard stories about me and my dad. Yeah. Shared a, a counseling session that was pretty painful between my father and I. Mm-hmm. And um, and then my dad came in and actually talked with my mom on the Connected Life. Yep. About That's our childhood. Pretty awesome. Yep. So. Fourth of July rolls around and, and we're up here and we're making what we call thunder crackers. They're very thunder crackers. They're very loud fireworks. It can be very heard, loud. Heard for miles around. Mm-hmm. Miles and miles of echoing. And it's kind of a fun activity. They take a while to make and so it's uh-huh. like you kind of just hang out and talk and and make there's an, there's an exchange in conversation between my mom and my dad about. Uh, a certain person in our past and uh, my dad's r- way of relating to this person and it sets me off. I mean, I am having an emotional flashback. I, I'm anger level 12 out of 10. A hundred percent. And I just go into this yelling. I start yelling. I start yelling obscenities. I'm just like, this is insane. I can't believe you do this. Blah, blah, blah. And logically, I'm in my logic space. And I, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm in an emotional flashback about this type of behavior. Hmm. I could stop it probably and shut it completely down and just walk out of the room. Or I could let this thing run like a wildfire <laughs> and see where it goes. So midway into this whole thing, My mom tries to interrupt. And I'm like, Mom, I need you to back out of our argument right now. Yeah. And Dad is, you know, he's like on the edge because he's not sure. He's fighting back. Yeah. I mean, he's he's not yelling like me. He's like, I need you to calm down. And I'm like, no, I'm not calming down. Bleepity, bleepity, bleep, bleep, bleep. (laughs) And and I keep having to tell my mom to get out of it. And at some point, you come kind of wandering into the background and realize it's probably not the safest place for you. Well, I was taking a bath, and then I heard some yelling. But and you I thought, thought it was playful. It, I did think it was playful. It wasn't so playful, though. Nope. And then I decided I'm going to go right back out of the room. Mm-hmm. You lunch. were like a turtle. Yep. I poked my pop, head out. Uh-huh. And you're like, and then, nope. And this, this is the first rule um, that I think needs to go out there uh, for women. Women, if two men are in an argument, you just stay your way out of it. You just let them go. You let it happen. They need to work it out. <laughs> and I, and I, multiple times I was like, no, you need to get out of here and let us work this out. It was funny. Your dad said that to your mom too. My dad modeled it back to her too because about yeah. the third time, she, third or fourth time she did it, he's like, Barb, I need you to stay out of this. <laughs> She's like, okay. Totally. She's in the background. And so dad and I are really going into it. And, I, and at some point I can hear the internal voice like – I have this internal conversation and I say, um, I say to myself, because I can, I can see how the, the, the strength of this emotion is from the little kid inside. Yeah. And I said, I'm willing to let you have this anger and be out of control in this moment. Only if you're willing to get to tenderness and the soft, the softness of where the actual pain is. Yeah. The tender emotions, the vulnerable emotions. It's like this inner dialogue exchange. It was really interesting. And all of a sudden, I, I, the negotiation that's happening as I'm getting loud and angry and kind of threatening violence towards my dad. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I'm about ready to knock you out. <laughs> and uh, never, haven't had one of these in years. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know that you've ever had one of these. 
Mm, yeah, Even nothing like well, one on a job site. Oh yeah. We had Once. one throwdown on a job site. Totally. And um, all of a sudden, I can I can feel the sadness that's under the anger that's mm. under the the years of buried anger on this issue. And I connect to the sadness. And I what's think int- it'd be worth like mentioning because somebody wrote in about the um, story with your dad that we did. Um, uh huh. And was like, I don't really fully understand the depth of trauma that you had over those things. And I was like, oh, it was not just a few stories. Like, the, there was so, we are very gracious in how we're communicating yeah. about your history. There's a lot of really deep, intense, crazy situations, pain. Yeah. There's a Th- lot. Th- those, those stories that previously were shared... Are a in, snippet. Are a snippet, and they encompassed. It was the encompassing. Totally. They, they signified uh, a, 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 a piece of the norm. Yeah. And like, it was a piece of the norm. So there was a strong norm of intensity inside of my home. Yeah, and, again, and I think, like... I've had respectful conversations about my history with regards to my parents, for the most part, because there's been so much radical transformation. Yes. As far as them, like... When people know my parents now, they don't know the parents I knew. They're like, no, they're, they're different humans. They're loving, they're kind, they're gentle, they're docile in a yeah. lot of ways. They're not, there's nothing that would point towards that, the type of behavior that I grew up in. Yeah. Which is beautiful. That's what, that's what my hope is, is that all people that grow up in, in pain and, and relating in dysfunction, that one day they get to say, we look nothing like we did. Yeah. And I've got to say, this is one of those areas that makes me believe in God. Watching your parents' radical transformation, I just think, like, it's so beautiful. And it, when I see people transform for the better, it feels like such an amazing... It really does. An amazing gift. I, I, that's, that's one of the places I see God the most, is when I see radical transformation in yeah, people. Yeah, people who are once on so far of one end of the spectrum and they're an entire there's this uh, you know I don't overly quote scriptures but it talks about being a new creation in Christ but actually a healing journey that yeah. all of a sudden you look like a new creature yeah. because love has made its way so far in that it heals something so deeply inside of you that the original intent for who you were made to be finally is seen absolutely comes out and so anyways I feel that way about your parents and I feel that way about me and you actually like if we tried to explain what we used to be like it'd be hard for people to imagine it yeah and sometimes we have and people are like that doesn't they they don't have context they don't believe it it. only people who knew us before yep have any real context for it so anyway I just wanted to put that out there that there's like actually a lot of stuff that it's very logical that you've had to spend a lot of time working through stuff with your dad. And it's probably very logical that I responded the way that I did over yes. this situation. Totally. It's I cuz I think if they just hear this story they can think like wow, Justin's really trigger happy or he has really high emotions or he's like really sensitive and that's just not true. Yeah. And and even relating to this story uh, it definitely had to do with the avoidance of, of, of certain conversations and topics. And I, I wasn't willing to avoid. Yeah. I wa- and, and, and I was tired of avoidance. Totally. On it. So I, but what I did do is I got present with my pain. Yeah. You got under the anger. I got under the anger. And I just start crying. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I love you for these reasons and I am angry for these reasons because I've wanted to see this happen and these are the ways that I've fought to love you dad or love this family or fight for this family's health and you know I'm I'm sad you know I'm sad for the place for the places that you're you haven't been willing to engage or the places that you haven't been willing to value yourself that's about as deep as I'm going to go into that that portion of the conversation yeah but I'm actually allowing myself to be present with my sadness over a lot of those things. And this is what was miraculous. Here's what's really beautiful. Powerful even. I watched my dad. He's just finally listening after we've gotten the, wi- the women folk out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And, and he gets up and he walks over as I'm just leaning against the counter sobbing. And he wraps his arms around me. 
Mm. And that was the second time in my entire life that I think I can remember. The yeah. the first time was about five years ago, four or five years yeah, ago, maybe. Yeah, I think about four years ago. And and, and uh, it was at our house in, in Reading. Yep. But he comes over and he holds me. And let me back up and share a little piece of information. Recently, I've been working through uh, complex PTSD and in trauma therapy. And I would love, if you grew up in abuse, you should read this book. I think it's a phenomenal book. I think it's really emotionally intelligent. I think everybody so far we've recommended it to has been like, this is my life story. I'm understanding myself. Yeah, I feel so seen and known. Uh, there's a book called Complex PTSD from surviving to thriving yeah and the number one recommendation i make with this book if you pick it up uh is do (laughs) not power through this book this book needs to be read about one chapter a week yep maybe two and it, it deals with uh physical verbal emotional abuse and, and neglect. neglect. Yeah. And neglect is one of the things they point out and the biggest part of it is one of the biggest abuses or pains is childhood neglect where you were just not nurtured. You weren't really paid attention to and you didn't feel like you really even existed. Yeah. But that's a side note for anyone out there. I mean, I, I, Pete Walker, I think is his name. Yep. Is that who it is? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna, we're going to get him on the podcast. I'm going to go after Pete and get him on here. Anyways, so I've been processing trauma and, and these triggers deliberately going into the pain and the pain of self-sufficiency. Mm-hmm. And, and my entire life has been this sense of self-sufficiency. Like I can do it all on my own. And I've been yielding in this trauma uh, healing process to not have having to be the biggest person in the room. Well, and this happens when you grow up in abuse or in lots of situations, actually. Like it's... It, we and you are very similar. We both grew up. We had to be hyper vigilant and always the person in control. And like we both parented our parents and there was a lot of chaos and out of control things happening around us. And we had to like pretty much lead the way. And so what you learn is to be very independent. Yeah. I'm fine. I don't need anyone. I don't need anything. Like in my childhood, all of the needs are being taken up by the other people. So... I have no needs, which the concept is I meet my own needs. I don't need other people to help me. But in both of our self-sufficiency, it has blocked part of our healing process. Well, self-sufficiency absolutely binds us from receiving the love that we need. Because anyone who's listening who goes, yeah, I got it. I can do it on my own. I don't need help. It's literally you. Self-sufficiency is a wall between you and the love that heals. Yep. The love that was sent to heal and restore and nurture. So self-sufficiency is really birthed out of a lack of nurturing in yeah. some way, shape, or form. Absolutely. You don't have somebody else protecting you, taking care of you, comforting you, making sure you're okay. You learn that you have to do that on your own. And it's a great protector. Like, I'm really thankful for self-sufficiency. It helped me a lot. It helped you to survive. But the idea is, is moving from surviving to thriving. Yeah. And we can't thrive in self-sufficiency. Absolutely. We can only survive in it. Yep. And so there's this whole concept. In order for me to get healed, I have to let go of my relationship with self-sufficiency mm-hmm. and allow myself to be nurtured. I have to allow myself to play the role or, or uh, step into the role of being small. Being a kid again, the kid being that you, a kid, because here's what happened in your childhood. Because I'm a powerful adult, I'm a very capable adult yes. who really doesn't need anybody. If I don't, if I want to live on my own, I could really create a world where I don't need anybody. Oh, absolutely. But here's another word for being big or being hyper vigilant or growing up too fast would be like learning to be in control. Yep. And so, and so there's what these you're levels talking of being about a control is freak. giving yourself permission to let down your guards and allow other people to affect you yeah that's the thing when you grow up and the people around you are crazy you learn or aloof or disconnected yeah i'm yeah i was trying to use crazy as the thing to just cover all of the ideas of what parents could be like right. but it could be that they're too they're self-absorbed and or they're work. docile and disconnected yeah. yeah they're depressed they are um uncaring and nurturing there's so many things that they could be but the goal the thing is you learn i don't need to be affected by other people 
Totally. And that can, and and I think it's a good thing to slowly come out of. Like you shouldn't just instantly be like, okay, I'm letting everybody in now because that's not safe. But it's so important to let go of the control and become allow yourself to be vulnerable with safe people. Yeah. So here I am deliberately working on being out of control, playing the role of being a kid in a healthy way and letting love and nurture uh, get me, take care of me. You know, I'm 36 years old. Here's my dad. He stands up, walks over, puts his arms around me, starts to hold me. And because I've been fostering this, uh, this, uh, uh, how do I put it? Um, this ability to let my walls down. I'm allowing myself to really sink into this hug. Yeah. I'm allowing myself to fully be at peace. I can feel myself like my shoulders relax. I'm relaxing into him holding me. Mm -hmm. And I have this conversation internally. I said, Justin, you have permission to be little right now and stay little. Yeah. You have permission to absorb this love that dad has to finally give mm -hmm. as he's just holding you. And I go from like crying hard to weeping to at some point wailing. And there's this deep guttural cry yep. coming from the deepest places of my gut. And I can feel this resolve uh, on a on a physical level yeah. and on an emotional level. Which as, is something we're really actually going after is releasing the trauma from your body as much as your emotions. Yeah, because I learned to be very disconnected from my body. And so as I'm, I'm connecting into my body and allow myself to be there and I'm I can tell that my dad is willing to hold me as long as I'm willing to be present in the hug. Right. So I'm not pulling myself away. So I, I mean, I, this hug's going into five, eight minutes as he's oh, just holding me. Maybe and crying. 10, 15. Well, no, I, I, I finally get my bearings about me and pull out of it. Oh yeah. And so he releases and he stands and he leans back and he just stares me in the eyes and he's got tears just running down his face because he's fully present with the reality of what's happened here. And he has a lot of clarity because I gave a lot of clarity as to why I got so angry Yeah. Uh, and, and, and the levels of it. When you're being soft, you're like, I care yeah. so much. This is killing me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as he's looking at me, it's the first time, honestly, that I felt like my dad actually peered into me. Mm. And I didn't tell you about any of that. Like that he saw you. Yeah, he saw me. Like I, I saw him seeing me. He wasn't looking past the moment. He wasn't disconnected from it elsewhere. I could see that he saw his son. Mm. May have been, maybe, the, maybe the second time. Maybe the first time was right before my wedding. Mm. Uh, and dad, dad sat down with me and talked to me. Um, but he was fully there. And I just start sobbing again and he leans in and he grabs me and holds me. Mm. And, and I, and I somehow, you know, purge for a while and then was out of it again. And this happened, this sick cycle happened about six times. Oh, totally. I was like peeking around the corner watching this because I didn't want to ruin the moment, but I wanted to watch everything. I would say that there was almost 45 minutes of dad holding me on and off as I cried. Oh Yeah. And, and over and over again, he would say a few things. And then he stands there. And he just says, Justin, I'm so sorry you ever had to take on the burden of being the biggest person. Whether it was at, at our business or it was in the home or all these things and that you felt so alone in that. I and think he also said, I'm sorry that I didn't do that. Yeah. I'm sorry that that, that job was open to take you know basically and, you know in in regards to the there, there's purpose in me sharing this the last podcast that we did where mom dad were on it dad was freshly exposing himself and he was doing it on a podcast yeah. it wasn't like we were in a room alone as it was right and so there was levels that he was able to go to in that conversation whether it's apologies or it was sharing his heart it was there was only certain depths that he could go to. Yeah. And, and in this moment, there was nowhere for him to run, and there was no real audience for it except for mom and, and, and Abby just hiding in the background, <laughs> uh, 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 orbiting, uh -huh. listening, cry. Uh, mom was crying herself, too. Oh, well, I was weeping. We were all weeping. Were you Your really? dad was weeping. Your mom was weeping. I was weeping. Yeah. You can't watch... Because you can see your dad stepping into this thing in fathering and you can see that little kid inside of you that was so devastated over and 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 over, and over again. Yeah. And you can see like love healing 
something that had existed for so long. There's no, I mean, you'd have to be a cold hearted human to not be moved by that. Yeah. <laughs> Your mom comes over to me because she could see me like hiding out in the doorway and she just comes over to me and grabs me and cries on me. Cause I think she's like, I need someone too. <laughs> Did she really? Yes. I didn't know that. This yeah. is the first time we've even really talked about the situation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How much? Yeah, take a left here. Okay. Roll up your window, too, while you're at it. Okay. We're still driving. We're going through the park here. It's so I fun. I think um, what they must be thinking, watching like me driving down a mountain holding a microphone. Oh, yeah. They have to be like, what is she, what is, what what is is she doing? On when we drove there? past the park ranger, I almost like threw the mic down because it feels like a cell phone to me. Yeah. Like, oh, no, it's going to be illegal. You're right, but they actually couldn't do anything to us because no. it's not a cell phone. It's not a cell phone. Yeah, it's a microphone. So um, it was really beautiful to see. And your dad validated you. It was funny because um, on the podcast he said, I validate you. <laughs> but that was. Which, which he didn't. He was trying to. I mean, he was trying to figure out how to validate. He was trying validate. to. Yeah, yeah, totally. So he just says, I validate you. But what I'm saying is it was beautiful because he got this moment to emotion. It was like he logically validated you. Right. But then he got to emotionally he validate fully you. emotionally connected with it. And he kept crying and holding and apologizing. He just said, I, I just release you from the burden of that. And, and I internally, I had this conversation where I was just like, every part of this, you get to receive Justin. Mm -hmm. And the truth is not a lot of dads would have the capacity to do this after all those years. Totally. Um, because it's so scary and you, you kind of get stuck in your ways and you just don't know how to navigate it. And so I think part of the conversation in this um, this vacation uh, specifically has been really beautiful because there was no there was no intent to get somewhere or to get to anything. It was just let's just go hang out with mom and dad and then go go uh, travel. But there's something in the middle of the mess, like allowing things to be out of control. Even us now, like we share our hearts with people and people get transformation through what we do, but we're still messy. Yeah, and we're in the middle of our mess. Mm -hmm. We're not scared of that mess. That mess can lead to such beauty if we're willing to not only go through the messes but then vulnerably connect yeah in it and get to the the tender parts of our our hearts it was really beautiful you could feel his tears like pouring over you when he was holding you oh yeah and he just put his face against my face mm. he was just had his face lean into my face the whole time Something that is amazing is he, um, so we did our Living Fully Alive course this year, and we d we're going to do it every January because um, it was so great this last year. But we did our Living Fully Alive course, and we teach about how to validate and um, and actually even like how to get over your shame so you can validate yeah. other people and why validation works like scientifically, all that kind of stuff. We go through that in the course. And so your mom has been having him watch that yeah. with her. And the, it's crazy because he, I saw in a conversation I had with him earlier, he was able to validate me about something that had nothing to do with him. But then he was able, he was able to emotionally connect in a really deep way with me. And then he was able to do that with you. And so it, it's a very full circle thing because so much of this, it started from your mom watching the course. Yeah. And then your dad watching the course and then your dad watching the co course has propelled this forward. Yeah. It's amazing because it's actually given him language and he's been able to utilize that and have some ahas, which is really fun. Yeah. It's really beautiful. I'm proud of him for being willing to plug in and do that. Anyways, as we're, you know, walking this out and vacations and family times come up, especially because it's summertime and people are hanging out. You can choose to avoid your family all you want. Yeah. You can choose to avoid uh, the circumstances in front of you. You can run and just be like, oh, I hate it. I just disconnect in family vacations because everyone's always crazy. Mom is mom, dad is dad, brother's brother, sister is sister, whatever it happens to be. Or you can go, you know what? I'm going to go jump into it. Yep. I'm going to embrace it. The good, the bad, the ugly. I'm going to allow room for messiness. And I'm going to allow room for conversations that may be necessary that we've never had. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be vulnerable yeah. if I need to. To be honest, we've had 
the way that transformation started happening in your family was honest conversations over and over and over again. When something happened that triggered us, we would just say like, Hey, this is this thing that's going on. And it was yeah. not fun in the beginning. Like it's uncomfortable when somebody starts having, is oh, starts yeah. being honest, but actually you can create a history. There's such a history now with your family that honesty leads to, to connection. Oh yeah. And the, resolution and restoration. Yep. Now in the beginning it didn't and nope. it felt like this is the end of our family. And that's one of the key things that happens in family units is usually when someone starts disrupting the force, <laughs> yeah, the system, <laughs> the system and bucking the system. Yeah. Everyone's convinced you've They're disrupted like, ah! the system and it's the end of everyone's world. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, this f- system isn't nice and I don't like it, but I know it. I know uh-huh. what it's like. I know how uh-huh. it works. I don't want to try something new. <laughs> Quit turning my system upside down. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so a lot of times, you know, family members can go away butthurt for weeks on end. Like, I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you'd even, you know, act like I would feel that way by suggesting these things. And that's where we go, hey, I'm going to keep pushing in for clarity. Yeah. And I'm going to go through some fiery trials in the beginning because those fiery trials that took us a couple of years of going through actually led to these, again, beautiful family system that's still messy and has its dysfunctions, but has so much victory inside of it. Yeah. I just got an email from one of my clients while we were on this trip and I've been working with her and she got the father series. I pretty much recommend everybody go through the father series. It's like getting a year of counseling inner healing, deep heart connect, but it's awesome because it's not just logical. And this is what me and you are going through in our own counseling right now is logic is really helpful and beneficial. But if you don't get emotional healing and physical healing, you get trapped in it. So like, so the great thing about the father series is it's not just logic. It also connects to your emotions and helps you get there. But so she's going through that and it's, bringing up stuff. And she, I was like, you got to talk to your dad. You've got it. She's, she was terrified to contact her dad because her dad has gone through some really, really hard stuff in his life. And I think everybody's scared. If I ask a question or I confront, it'll make my parent fragile. It'll make them feel like a complete failure. It'll make, and I was like, but you just got to get some information. Ask him what he remembers from your childhood. Ask him like, it doesn't have to be accusatory, you should at least collect some ideas though and have a conversation. Don't be afraid of breaking him. This is the number one thing. I do this wrestle with almost all of my clients. Like, no, actually it's worth it. I can't, I mean, I could probably tell you 20 stories right now of clients who fought back with me about being honest with their parents, moms or dads. And then they go and they're honest. And I don't, I'm not saying go be honest. Like you're the worst mom and dad ever. But like, Hey, these are the things that I feel. And this is what I felt for years. And this is like, what do you love me? Do you actually like me? Like I have this one client and she's not sure if her mom actually likes her. I'm like, well then ask her, Yeah. do you like Instead me? Just wondering the rest of your life. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. And then let's talk about it. Yeah. So, um, and why I came to that conclusion, my, my client messaged me and she had talked to her dad And he was so kind. Mm. And so he shared things. He's like, oh, I wasn't able to connect to you. I had all this trauma that I was working through. I was angry and shut down. And and he said that stuff. It wasn't like she had to be like, you're, you know, and not every dad will respond that way. Yeah. But um, it like painted a picture for her of what her childhood was like it helped her understand why she does things today that she does wow it validated her she like wept and was able to release a lot of emotions and they were able to have loving connection over it instead of just a wall that nobody ever addresses yep and so with vacations on the rise and hangouts this summer there's tons of times for play yeah oh we've had so much fun and there has to be the play. A hundred percent. And you can't always have intense family vacations. Nope. But there are vacations and times where you get to you get these few snippets around the family, especially as you begin to get older, that you go, I may not have a lot of these left. Mm-hmm. So maybe I should make the most of these moments, not just make them happy and ignore what what has been, 
but maybe begin the journey of going and being fully present inside of them and having a few of the rough conversations that are necessary so that it doesn't have to be a fake face in the future, but it gets to be, oh my gosh, my latter years with my parents, my latter years with my brothers and sisters were really beautiful Mm -hmm. because we did some really rough work that was necessary to get there, but I didn't have to put on one more plastic face, one more, you know, uh, pretend playtime for an entire week or weekend with a group of people that are supposed to be the ones that I feel most known by and most loved by. And I think that uh, besides intense conversations or dealing with uh, historic things, there's so much connection that can be shared if you begin to just share yourself. Like, not just about how you relate with one another, but even stepping into family vacations going, I'm going to fully be me. Yeah. I'm just going to have fun. I'm going to be me and I'm going to share me and I'm going to share the stories of my life. Irregardless of what people think or how they respond, I'm going to really invite people into my world as I jump into these vacations. And I'm going to know and I'm going to remind myself a lot of times uh, clients, as they tell me about going home, they feel five again. They feel eight oh, again, yeah, even though they're successful entrepreneurs or executives oh, yeah. or all kinds of stuff like that. Nobody can get us like our parents can. Yep. Or our family systems can. Yep. Totally. And so, you know, when I, when I look at this, you go back into these systems, you have to begin to tell yourself, I'm probably going to get emotionally triggered. I'm probably going to experience some flashbacks as I go back into the family. But if I'll allow myself to go in there with that knowledge, I can begin to ask myself, what do I need? What do I need in this emotional flashback? What do I need to get out of feeling like a little kid? What what conversations do I need to have? What does it look like for me to be the person that I am 24-7 outside of this space as I get into this vacation realm? And I think like a lot of times what you need can't be answered by other people. Like there's a lot of self-compassion and validation is really important. But what I am... but but sometimes conversations are really important. And the one thing I just wanted to mention before we kind of wrap this up is um, if you're on the journey of trying to show up like you, it's almost like sometimes we can go on a journey of transformation and our family can be the same old system. And it's like the, p- the puzzle piece we were once doesn't fit in the puzzle anymore. Yep. And there's a lot of rubbing the wrong edges. And I just want to encourage you that um, for us – we have both had seasons like that with our family and there has been a place where we found a new way to relate yep. with both of our families. And so, but it took time and it took energy and perseverance. And one of the things that um, they say psychology wise is it's not really about how smart you are or how talented you are, but it's about how much perseverance that you have. Yep. Perseverance is a massive component to healing. Don't give up if you are still trying to figure out how to be you inside of your family. And if you, if it's easy for you to be with you within your family, then invite other people into that family system so they can enjoy what it's like to be a part of a good family. Totally. So thanks for joining us today in Glacier National Park. We, We were like, let's just take and take people on the road with us. And yeah. let them have an experience with us as we're just driving through the park. It may have sounded windy. Yep. It may have had a bunch of noise. That's totally okay because you were on vacation with Justin and Abby today. And um, if any of you want to find out more about the Living Fully Alive course that Abby talked about earlier, I thought I'd mention, you can email us at LFA at stumvalconsulting.com and just say add me to the list. Uh, as far as information list Mm -hmm. and we can put you on the list for our future course that's going to take place in uh, early 2020 I think and um, you can check out the the father Father series at justinabby.com and you can check that out there and also if you got anything out of this just inspired um, uh, encouraged or anything you can go and rate review subscribe and share with people we love that rate us on itunes or whatever platform you listen to and, and let your friends know about it we want to see people get transformation and if you have great conversations with people in your family or you show up as you for the first time send us a message we want to hear about it yeah we really want to hear about those stories so thanks for joining us and goodbye from glacier national park goodbye